just came out of a great meeting um, with my PR firm, Bullseye. So hi, John, and hi, Paul, if you guys are watching. Um, but aside from that, I wanted to talk to you guys um, about uh, a kind of new research study that came across my desk um, in December of um, last year, crazy to say that already, um, there was a study published in the New York Times about alopecia and its relationship to celiac disease. Um, alopecia is simply defined as hair loss or baldness, but um, it's most of the time when you, most people think of alopecia, it, it's when you see people who have gone completely um, bald, but not, that's not necessarily true of its actual definition. Um, there are different types of alopecia where some is just kind of spotty baldness and some is complete, um, complete baldness. Um, Al Angela Cristiano is an associate professor of dermatology and genetics at Columbia, and she recently announced the discovery of the genes implicated in alopecia areata, which is defined by the online medical dictionary as a hair loss condition of unknown cause that can be patchy or extended to complete baldness. Um, so she talks about the study she conducted about genes the genes that people have um, who have alopecia, which was a very um, unresearched topic because most people viewed it purely as a cosmetic um, disease or disorder. But luckily, um, uh, this doctor went in and did a lot of research on it. And um, so in, these are their findings that they had. It says, in 2008, we published our findings this past July. Ours was the first study of alopecia to use genome-wide approach. By checking the DNA of 1,000 alopecia patients against a control group of 1,000 without it, we identified 139 markers for the d disease across the genome. We also found a big surprise. For years, people thought that alopecia was probably the stepchild of autoimmune skin disorders like psoriasis and vitiligo. The astonishing news is that it shares virtually no genes with those and is actually linked toward, with rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, and drum roll please, celiac disease. Um, this is gonna be an added push. This is gonna be so good for both communities, um, not just the, the alopecia community, but the celiac disease community as well, because this is gonna push more research studies and more clinical trials. As we know now, the gold standard for celiac disease diagnosis is a positive biopsy, which you know, in, in uh, excuse me, involves sedation and recovery. But you know, we are not going to be able to hopefully biopsy at some point the most accessible organ, which is our skin, and hopefully do some testing just through that, which would be amazing and incredible. And I think that's a very positive thing to you know use as a jumping off point and something for the future of diagnosing celiac disease. Um, Already, these findings have helped with diagnoses. Um, at Columbia, it says we have large clinics for diabetes and celiac disease, which is very true. And since they published the paper, those clinics are asking patients, have you experienced hair loss? And about 10% of both um, diabetic and celiac disease patients um, said yes, they do experience hair loss in large clumps. Um, I've also heard of a number of people who have regrown hair after being diagnosed celiac and going on a gluten-free diet. And I've also heard a lot of people um, who go on a gluten-free diet, maybe from gluten intolerance, or you know they just don't feel well eating gluten, have actually started to regrow hair, you know, just and not even realize that they weren't growing hair at kind of a, a quote-unquote normal rate. Um, so, and alopecia, much like celiac disease, is a genetic disease um, disorder. So, I think that um, article is incredibly interesting. I applaud these. Um, these associate prof this associate professor and these researchers, you know, pushing to do research in fields that, like alopecia, which is viewed as cosmetic, um, but pushing to do research in fields that other people haven't um, been so willing to research in, and that's helping, you know, who knew that this study about alopecia would help people with celiac disease, so that's just incredible. Um, hope everyone's doing well out there. It's a beautiful day in New York City. Hope it's beautiful where you are. Um, and as always, it's from Have Not to Have and Gluten Free Dining. Thank you so much for watching.